get my thick boy shirt on. Should I show it up? Should I show it up? Just for protest life. Dude, there we go. No, Blackout on Instagram, man. Huh? Yes, like Instagram's all boring now. Okay, I'm ready. Ain't no pictures. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Eric. Adam. Adam Short, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. You ready to start? I do. We're recording, man. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Staying in Trouble. Dude, Eric, there's some crazy stuff happening now. Dude, it is level seven of Jumanji. I yeah. don't wait to get to the end of this game. Every morning I wake up, I'm scared to turn on my phone because I don't know what 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 level of the revolution are we in right now. Like, I mean, like there is some crazy stuff going on. Like, from the lockdown now to these protests, it's it's nuts. Well, and I think the lockdown has has uh, propagated the riots, so it's it's like popping a pimple everywhere. Uh, I don't you know. You use I, that description. That's, that's good, though. Do you think? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I had a lot of tender conversations with 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 friends of mine uh, during the day, actually, just because I, you know. I don't know where I'm supposed to stand. I don't know, like, there's no clear directives of like, hey, if if you feel this way, this is what you do. If you feel this way, like, you know, I mean, and it's it's kind of like Jumanji. Like, I, I saw that meme. I'm like, yeah, I definitely feel like it, it, we got rhinos, we got elephants in the street, we got just all crazy, you know, craziness going on. I got a vulture above us at all times, right? We've got you know, economic loss everywhere. We've got stimulus. We've got, you got can't so you got candy everywhere. Candy? Yeah. <laughs> government <laughs> money? House. Government, government oh, money is like candy. candy. Oh, now I get what you're saying. You know? I'm a little on the hungry side. I'm so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just it's just crazy times right now. It and, is. And I don't, I don't, I think everywhere you stand, I don't think if you're a person of color, if you're not a person of color, it's crazy around us. I think everyone is 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 trying to, to try to figure it out. And um, uh, a close friend of ours, you know, she posted, you know, kind of a resurgence of a tragedy that's still close to her heart, which was the Mandalay Bay tragedy. And she said, "Listen, riots weren't necessary then. Riots aren't necessary now." You know. And, and I think that's the message that we're, I think everyone's trying to get out. The riots are not necessary. The protests are more than welcome. And, and then, and then how do we, su so how do we support protesters and how do we support law enforcement? And now, you know, some tragedies on both sides are still, uh, you know, coming in. And, and I think that's what scares people. It scares me. Well, the one thing you've always said is you you live by that truthism, right? Yeah. Yeah, if it's yep. true. Well, let me tell you something that's definitely true is in every profession, in every part of life, there's jerk-offs yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And there are jerk-off cops, and then there's fantastic police officers. There are jerk-off plumbers and good plumbers. There are jerk-off protesters or rioters, and then there's real good ones that are out there that really want to see some change. So in every aspect, you kind of have to be honest with yourself in this whole thing that wherever you go in life, there's going to be those those kind of people. And uh, we just can't let those kind of people dictate really how we live our lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean it's But wherever you look, the, there are those kind of people. And, yeah. and, and that's just a fact of life, you know. But you can't judge a handful of jerk-off cops that all cops are bad. These cops are out here to protect us and to, to serve. And you can't say that all protesters are those jerk-off rioters that are breaking into uh, uh, businesses, burning cars, and doing those things. There are people out there who want honest change, and they feel like uh, they're being mistreated. And as an Americans, they have every right to to protest in that way. So there, there are people out there who would like to see some change and want to do those good things. And, you know, but... Yeah, you're right, man. It's it is nuts. And well, let's get to some some brighter news. So, yeah. and, and we need this. I think everyone needs this. Um, That's why they listen to staying in trouble. Yeah, let's give James a, a a great introduction. One of my good friends, 
James, you want to introduce yourself, where, where you come from, and give us a little background on your story? And... I thought he was going to introduce a great introduction. I know, I was waiting, like, yourself. I want to hear this. It was like, <laughs> it's been a minute since I've talked to E, so let's go to hear this. He's a, motivator speak, a motivating yeah. speaker, man. I mean, So, like... yeah, James is, is uh, the founder and owner of Next Level Mindset. And if you're looking for an opportunity to meet someone that has had a lot of life experience, and so it's one thing to have life experience. It's another way to be able to communicate it and to be able to help others. And so I think that like a lot of conversations I've been having with everyone is I, I know where Adam's heart is. I know where, uh, you know, I know where Eric's heart is. I know where Mary's heart is. I know where, you know, Jane's uh, heart is. And part of that is, you know, in life, we talk about coaching. We talk about training. We talk about you know, we had uh, you know we had James Wood in from the from the plumbers union and talked about the difference between someone that's been trained as opposed to having to retrain someone. Well, when you talk about motivational speaking, what are you talking about? You're actually talking about changing people's hearts and changing their minds. And you know, and we have our our regular uh, certified therapist Josh Silito in here, and Josh talks about things that we have we can do with our own like self-study or our own self-reliance when it comes to mental health. And so James, in those regards, um, he was a professional athlete at one point. Um, I know he looks like it still today. <laughs> okay, that was just a piece of love. That was just oh, a piece of candy. Uh, we went to the dentist last week, Dr. Travis uh, Nye in, in Green Valley, and, and Dr. Travis is like, oh no, gummy bears are bad. Chocolate is good. Gummies actually rot your teeth. Chocolate is actually is actually good for you. And he gave like these eight reasons. I was like, uh, and my wife was in the room, my son was in the room, and they just loved Dove chocolate. And so I'm like, uh, you just increased my grocery bill. Like you just took the you know you just took the brakes off the <laughs> off the train. And um, is he actually saying chocolate's good for your teeth? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I'll tell you what, it's not good for. Uh, those hips yeah <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now <laughs> I mean you, you could have the brightest smile in the world as you're chunky dunking in the backyard man. <laughs> I'm just wondering are you comparing me to a gummy bear or a piece of chocolate I'm just wondering yeah I am, I am too so here's the crazy thing about James James was what, what position do you think he played in soccer <laughs> do you oh, know any positions to begin no, with no I don't oh you got me dude Come on, man. I, I never played soccer. Let's just go back to third grade, right? I never played soccer. You in had third the grade. players up front. You had the I players in the ball. middle. And you had, you know, the players in the back and you had a goalie. So, what position do you think he played? Goalie. He was. Did you talk to him before yet? No, I didn't. I'm just guessing. He's short. Dude, he's fast. Man. He seems fast. Yeah. He's quick witted. Yeah. So, even though we haven't let him talk at all on this podcast, we're seven minutes into it, and he's yeah. only said four words. Yeah. <laughs> that's the most, that, see, that's his power. It's like Jedi power. He's like, I'll get them to say something nice about me. I will get them to talk for about six minutes. So, seven. James, give us a little bit of background on, on Next Level. So, yeah, so Next Level came out five years ago now. Five years ago, so... Came in, um, is that better? Yeah, 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 yeah. There okay. we go. That's all right. That's all right. You gotta so, get the mics right. came in five years ago. I, I was sitting at work and I, I jumped into the financial planning world, financial investments and so forth. And you know, I, I left uh, working retail and running, running some gyms, I actually owned a couple of them in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things I loved doing was being able to talk to the coaches for the football teams as well as the athletes, developing them. I was like, man, I want to I wanna go back and just kind of do my speaking thing. And I left the retail world and said, oh, let's roll. You know yeah. what I mean? And stepped into it. Next level mindset evolved and, you know, started speaking. And, you know, it was just more of like things that I needed when I was, I was younger. I grew up, you know, I grew up in a, a small town, right? Suburban world, middle class world. But, you know, grew up my friends. So, you know, I'm Filipino. And I look Mexican, Native American, and I, I'm getting mistaken for every single nationality but Filipino. In fact, they don't even claim me, by the way. Um, They're but, usually a little bit thinner. No, it's so funny because I went. To, 
So I went to a, uh, I went to actually a barbecue on a Friday. I can like, get you some Pacquiao swag, no, by the way. No, that's it. Koreans love their barbecue. Right? And I'm not Korean. Oh, you're not a Korean. Uh, <laughs> I'm Filipino. <laughs> Filipino. So, but we're, we're barbecuing with a couple of Filipino cats. Go, so what are you? And I go, Filipino. And they go, you're Filipino? And it was like silence, right? I go, but I look Mexican, don't I? They go, absolutely. I'm like, I'm not, anyway. But so. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, don't I think that's a kid. I think that's common. All the time. All the time. You need to button this up? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so, I was going to guess Polynesian. Yeah, so I, I'll get that a little bit just because of how, how big I am. I, that, that wasn't it. <laughs> no, I would have went with Tonga. Come yeah. on, man. I would. Right. No, but it's cool. Come on, I'm as big as you, Adam. Come no, dude. Big, I know. Hey, big like, love, you know, man. You know? So, Someone's got to be the skinny mini in the room. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, but no. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where I was at. Oh, so I was, I grew up, you know, my friends all were in, like, literally in the hood. We just literally just, you know, hung out and so forth. Is that Jay? Yeah. Did you bring it? Yep. Yeah, so I got you guys some gear. Here you go. Look at that. A little bit of everything for you. A couple of towels. Are the ice cream stones somewhere? Did you Thanks, not, Claire. Did you not bring the ice cream? Dude, we got some swag. Here you Dude, go. This is all the guests we Dominate had. Dominate the day, right? Right? Thanks, you guys. Like You're welcome. And here's a hoodie. Oh, one of those thin. The thin, thin ones, ones, right? One of the like workout that. style ones. Yeah, right? I like that. Cut the sleeves off. Right? Give this to your <laughs> give this to your boy. And there's a black and yellow one too. There's a black and yellow. Right Hook on. you all up. Thank you. So but anyway, so yeah, so grew up that and then so I excelled in soccer. In fact, soccer kept me out of the streets. That's awesome. what I did. And it was funny because I was one of those guys that had a single mother, and she married, you know, my stepdad. And we didn't get along that well. I was mm -hmm. one of those, you know, so I had a rough upbringing. I can get that up all of them, whatever. And I, I was one of those kids that was supposed to be doing well, and I ran away from home, right? And I did. I, was, I literally lived in a, a dumpster for two days because I was too prideful to ask for any help. And anyway, ended up going up through life. And finally, it came to a point where... In life, you know how you come across cats that just go, hey, I need this, or I'm entitled to things. And yeah. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. It's everyone else's belief. But me in my head is no one's going to hand me nothing. So I ended up just doing my thing and growing. And, you know, I ended up playing soccer, played a little bit. And then all of a sudden, I, injuries kind of put me in a position where I started coaching, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where I started coaching my old high school soccer team. And then I coached a girls' soccer team, went to playoffs, which was actually pretty dope for me. And then I tried to take one more run at soccer and whatever. And, you know, finally I said, I'm done with this. And I got into the retail world. And finally anyway, ended up coaching and finally up developing people. And that's where Next Level Mindset came from is where, hey, there's three things that people struggle in, physically, mentally, financially. Mm -hmm. right? And if you can adapt and strengthen any of those areas, you'll be able to achieve what you really need to. If you, if you have your health, you'll be blessed. If you can take care of your mindset, you can, you can accomplish anything, whether it's you know, JV to varsity to starting to, you know, passing a test, just the mindset. And then financially, I mean, I'll tell you, financials, like, that's why I kind of do the investment side. Yeah. It's because, hands down, I think my biggest belief, and that's why I'm still branching that out, is I think the biggest slavery out there is financial slavery. I oh, mean, absolutely. You think about I agree. It, like, you can probably pick 10 people right now, and I can guarantee you that literally only one, one third of one of those people would be in a position to not have to find a job in six months. You know, I mean, yeah. they go look at the struggles we're having now with this dang quarantine and people losing their jobs with furloughs. And heck, even before that, it was when we went to the valet service and they went straight to, you know, contracted out versus tips and stuff. It just affected everyone. And you brought yeah. up Mandalay Bay. How many people lost their jobs because of what happened there? Yeah. You know, so if I can help people <laughs> adapt and, you know, so I do a lot of literally all my speaking for kids is either some form of motivational and even to a point where we do financial literacy as well, too. Is to kids, military. Um, you, you know, I don't know. I mean, all the new military guys don't know what to do with their new paychecks, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they're buying. I remember one guy told me he's like he just he's been in the service for he just got stationed at Nellis and five months ago, uh, five months in, and he already bought an Audi. I'm like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> like, you don't know what to do. But yeah, so that's what I do, and I love it. And when I do sales, you know, I'm you know I'm in the sales world, so being able to talk with those kind of guys and empower them is just huge for me. So that's where Next Level Mindset kind of jumped into and said, hell, I'm going to use my talents to help someone else that I didn't learn from school, you know? And, and, that's, and that's what I love about James, and because and it seems to my heart, too. Like, 
in being able to give back. You know, I was just telling a client this, like, they're like, hey, Eric, why do you do this? This is a, and I'm like, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be able to, to help others. And I, and I firmly believe when you're helping others, it's always going to be a win-win situation. And, you know, whether it's, a, you know, we were given some baseball analogies earlier, whether it's, you know, if you can put the bat on the ball, you've won. And so sometimes you may not be able to hit a home run for someone, right? But maybe you could get them to first base. Or, uh, you know, as a baseball coach, you know, if right. you get someone to first base, you've done your job, mm -hmm. right? And and it may not be as flashy, but you know what? I mean, you know, even as a pitching coach, right? If you can get your, your guy to, you know, 78 strong throws, you're doing well. And, and, and so there's little things like that where, and I think, you know, as we get older, we understand the value of, hey, how much are we investing in others around us? And that's why I wanted to have James on and talk about next levels because, you know, no matter, you know, what the you know, size of his shoe collection, he's been committed to, you know, he's been committed to giving Wait back. Wait a minute. You're a sneakerhead? I'm a big sneakerhead. Sneakerhead? You're a sneakerhead? I would like to be. I got kids. <laughs> yeah, he's living the dream. <laughs> living the dream. Dream. That's the ongoing thing is because I do now, now my wife is gonna hear this podcast, so it's gonna be worse, but you know, I have like <laughs> shoes on not even at the office, everyone's like, okay, that box that's for James, send it to his office. So, when the last dance you get came a out, vacuum sealed and like well like, it depends like on the warm. style. There's there's times where I'll surround wrap them and stuff yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And the guys aren't allowed to touch them. But that's the thing. The kids like my son, every time he brings someone new home, dad. Someone wants to see the collection. So I have to there's a literally a tour of my room. For real. It's not a closet, it's oh, a room, man. right? And that's and a good life right there. So I Last never, Dance came out and James is like the holy grail of, of, of video has come out. He's like, finally I'm oh, that's appreciated. Facts. That's facts. That's He's like, I'm know. appreciated for all my hard work. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time I mean I really don't want to invite myself into other guys' closets, but I want to go into yours. <laughs> Hey, you're welcome to come to my closet. There too. Just to tell you up front, it's a little small. <laughs> the shoe size. What size so, you wear? Oh, uh, 11 and a half. Okay, 12, yeah, I'm a 10 and a half, 11. So yeah. you're, I'm safe. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a 12, 12, 12 and a half. Sorry, guys. 13 sometimes. Yeah, so you can no, look. No, that's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. That's a fun collection. Well, so I never so, really had nice shoes when I was a kid. Like, we couldn't see. afford them. I did yard sale shopping for back to school. So that's my thing. So everyone says, like, someone made a comment on my Facebook and said, well, you act like as if you couldn't get nice shoes when you were a kid. Well, that's facts. I couldn't, yeah. right? I mean, I remember my first brand name pair of shoes was a pair of Nike Cortez from the second hand store. And it was because, and they were new still because it was half size difference. Yeah. Mm. But like, it was, it was my thing. So yeah, so there's some I won't even wear just because. Well, I, I told the story that I saved up money. I got a job over the summer. And I saved up money, so when I went back to school in junior high, I bought that first edition Reebok pumps. Oh you yeah, know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I wanted those so bad. Which ones? Did you want the tennis ones or the basketball? The basketball, basketball ones. <laughs> so, I, dude, I was all over them, and I saved up. I think they were. I, I knew they were over a hundred dollars then. I know I saved yeah. up more. I think they're buck sixty. It was the commercial, wasn't it? It's the commercial that got probably. It was, it, like, hold well, on. it was everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a D, D Brown, wasn't it? D Brown that did yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So, so I saved up money and I got those shoes and my dad was really, he thought it was a complete waste of money. Complete waste of money. Uh -huh. And I love those things. Best love those things. Yeah. I, I would murder anyone that would step on my shoes or anything. Yeah. I wore them every day and I kept my feet apart so I wouldn't scuff up the sides or anything. <laughs> Serious, man. That's awesome. Yeah. There's just something about a nice pair of shoes, man. So, so with a next level mindset, I, do you do speaking engagements? You yes. go to businesses or you do uh, like maybe people buy tickets to your no, thing or I, something? How, man, I haven't gotten that big. I wish. I wish I was that big yet. But he's no. working on a webinar series um, and he's also working on a video series. So, Are you? Yeah, well, so. we started at one time. So, <laughs> so yes, I, I, I do now, now with everything going video now. You think about yeah, it. Oh, I yeah. think that'll be a huge conversation. So I do want to do some kind of a webinar, but the question is, what kind of interaction can you have? Because I'm very, very upfront. I love to be able to interact with everyone I talk with. So that's still new, but um, uh, Instagram, you know, I'll do. I haven't done any for a while. I need to I need to get back into it. But Real mm -hmm. Talk Tuesday is what I did. Minute clips, you know, and just yeah. be able to 
powwow those out and you know actually ended up getting a few followers on that man like four thousand something but anyhow um i do a lot with the kids that's my biggest thing i love doing it for high schools do a lot for uh college signing days and um some of the younger kids middle school give, is us, my give us a give us like your top three councils that you think that kids are missing out on today that could probably benefit from it today like something that you know especially especially we talk about right now, right? Because right, right now where it is so chaotic life. Right. Like, I can't imagine his daughter just graduated from high school. And, I mean, I, they were born, they were 9-11 babies. Mm -hmm. Now, 18 years later, they are graduating from high school. Quarantine grads. Quarantine grads. Like, literally, I feel like they are out on, on a volcanic island, really. Like, I kind of imagine... Imagine, you know, just a big volcano. They're just looking around, going, "Dude, this is just a hot mess." Yeah. And where do we, where do I find some firm ground right now? And, and how do you know how do I build up from here? Right. When we were eighteen, right? Yeah, we didn't know what was going on either. But I never had any idea that, well, you know, the the Earth was splitting apart, or you know, that the country was splitting apart. That was never an idea. And I think these kids have had to live with that their whole lives, right? Our kids are studying 9-11 as a historical fact. Right. For the three of us, 9-11 was a histor is a memory. It's not a fact. It's a it's a memory. I know where we were, what we were doing, right? And now we're gonna fast forward and we're gonna be, yeah, I remember when the pandemic hit, right? March 18th, country went into lockdown. And so for those kids, right, whether they're athletes or non-athletes, what would, what would be like t top three things to, to help them navigate this with the correct mindset? Because, uh, you know, this is just complete chaos right now. Yeah. So, no. So, it's funny because, so with the gyms, um, we created this uh, program called Predator Conditioning, right? And anyway, so the reason why I bring it up is I actually have had a couple of um, athletes. Damon, Damon's actually, so soccer now, I'll brag about my son more than I will now. He's actually been looked at by an English school and as well as, you know, he's starting to get looked at by some other schools here. And he's only, a, he took it up in seventh grade. He's, he's in 10th now, right? He's going to be a junior next year. But, you know, those kids, he's got, he's got a cousin that's playing football at um, Lake, Westlake? Is that, West it's, up, it's, up West in, it's up in Utah, yeah. yeah. And then um, I've got my my son-in-law actually plays for the University of Utah. He's actually transferring down, hopefully, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but hopefully to BYU. I won't say his name so he doesn't get put on blast. Um, but uh, he plays he plays linebacker, wants to be a wide receiver. But anyway, their biggest conversation was, is, hey, we want to train. So actually, we built and trained and, and developed and kept going. And the reason why I keep bringing it up is right now, we have a thousand excuses to not do something, right? A mm -hmm. thousand excuses. And I bring up, I bring that up because I don't care if you're getting ready for college. I don't care if you're getting ready for a sport. I don't even care if it's your job. We have every reason to sit back because we lose sight at the end of the tunnel. So I always say continue moving forward, if that answers your question. is continue moving forward because sometimes you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But the best thing you can do is that. And I remember because... You know, I, I put, like, we started doing these 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 regimens, and finally, after about three, four weeks in, they're like, man, I know my guys. And I'm talking University of Utah guys. I'm talking Western New Mexico guys. I know my team's not training. And I'm putting in effort. And they know that now they can see, hey, look, I'm a step ahead of the game. And it doesn't matter if you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's the confidence you get in yourself, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. You're doing that. And, like, you know, how many people, well, you're in the plumbing world. Yeah. You know, I know you've got people, I know anywhere, right? Anywhere you've got people that go, I hate my job. I'm just doing it because I need the paycheck. And I, oh, yeah. Okay, you give me a thousand excuses why you won't get a new job because I don't have time because I've got to do this or I don't have the money. Well, guess what? You know what? Literally for six full weeks, you had time and a lot of these people got paid, but they didn't bother honing a new craft. And now guess what? They're still stuck on the same system and finding another excuse. Yeah. So I would say the biggest thing is just understand you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and if you're going to college, you've been wanting to go to college for at least the last four years, if not eight, 10, 12 years, and you knew you were gonna do that, and just because you can't see it or you don't know what's going on, why are you stepping back and not doing the things you need to do to go forward? Yeah, It's just gonna perfect you because the other part of the world, and they're, they're sitting and chilling. 
Yeah. They're sitting and chilling, and, and you can be able to step, oh, oh, where'd you go? You know what I mean? Yeah. There exactly. you are. So, see, sometimes motivation, I've always thought, comes when, when everything in the world is just perfect. Right, and that's the way people think it yeah, comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm motivated today because it's a beautiful day. I can go exercise. I can do everything. I got money in the bank account. Everything's okay, and I'm motivated. It's when nothing is going your way, when you don't have all those things. Right. Well, when you have to dig yourself out, and you have to roll out of the bed, you have to go do these kind of things, and right. you're not motivated to do it, but you're still driven to do it. Because people don't see it. I mean, you look at it. We just talked about it before we got on. You said that uh, the month of May was the best month you've had with the, with the podcast, oh, right? A huge month. And now, me looking in, I want to get into podcasts. I'm going to go, man, it's that easy, huh? And you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was that easy, James. Yeah, that easy. Because I don't see the 11 months or 10 months in front of that. I don't, I don't, I don't see the time you sacrifice from your family. It's just, oh, I just come in, start talking to people. Oh, they give me free stuff and I can do whatever I want. No, it's not like that. It's about creating relationships and the effort you put in each and every day. So I always tell people, like, hey, just I don't care what situation you're in. And some days are harder than others. You know, uh, you know, you, you had Chad on. I know Chad went through a batting slump for a while. Right. But yeah. what, do you, what did they tell you to do? Keep mm-hmm. swinging. That's what it is. And yeah. do you think he wants to swing the bat on some of those days? Like, no, I just I don't even want to see it right now. Mm-hmm. But he's got to do it. Cal Ripken said it on days that he said when he set the record for most most games play, whatever. It's the same thing. It's just, I always tell people 1% is the number. If you can do 1% more than yesterday, think about it. Three and a half months from now, you'll be twice as good as you are today. Yeah. And it's, it's hard because that 1% is sometimes tough work. It's tough to get out of bed if you don't see your vision. It's tough. Yeah. And so, but... Well, even when you do see your vision, even when you have a thought that this is what I want to get to, you know, bridging the gap between, uh, you know, you know, and especially as fathers, right? You know, my littlest came in this morning, right? He's like, he's got his agenda. He's like, Dad, let's get up, let's get my chores done, so that we can play games, right? Right. That, that that's number one to him right now, right? Hey, Dad, let's get a couple rounds of Fortnite in before you go to work. <laughs> you play Fortnite? Of course. I, dude, I tried that. My, if my so I, I died play, like in ten seconds. I was like, I'm done. If my, my kids play, <laughs> I play. That's no, that's awesome. Man. That that's you know. You know, all I tried to do a couple times. Things. Dude, I did. I was like, this is too much, man. And it's then they're trying to make me do the much. dance after it's over with. I can't do that either. Someone's got to get the victory royale. Might as well be me. That's what I always say. <laughs> yeah. So, That's good. Well, you know, one of the... Sometimes people will tell me, and this is what I hate, is like, I love going to the gym. I love working out. And right. people will say, man, I wish I had time to do that. And it's like, guys... That is the one thing we have in this world that is completely unbiased. I don't care who you are. We all have the same 24 hours. Absolutely. Okay. Rich, poor, it's what you do with that time. It's where you find that time. Everyone has time to get in shape. Everyone has time to, to learn a new skill, learn a new craft, get a new job. Well, for the last, what, four months, we all had a crap load of time on our hands. Right. Like, what did we do with that? Exactly. You know? and, and like our focus was... Something that I think we talked a little bit earlier that really boosted this podcast is I did have a lot more time. Yeah. So I was, dude, I was bugging Eric all the time. He was bugging me. We're getting people in there every time we get a chance. Well, now we have time. Let's focus on this. Yeah. And, and, and that's exactly what we did. But uh, one of the books that I read, I don't know if you ever heard of David Goggins. Yep. Oh, dude, love the guy. And the one thing he talks about is that callous mind. You know, and and strengthening those kind of skill sets that right. when life is not going your way, when life is is hard, you're still you're still goal minded and you're focused and you're going ahead. Yeah, and that's the thing you remember the most, right? People don't yeah. see because people look at David Goggins now, but you hear his story. Yeah, it's right. Amazing, but people don't get that, and people don't know, and that's and the reason why you know you have to work for it is look at the momentum you get. And it makes you feel good, right? Mm-hmm. The same thing with me for work, right? Same conversation was, well, we could have sat at home and just did the webinars. Man, I, I, I went into the office, right? Because I knew no one was going to be in the office, man. So I could just sit in there and do it. Yeah. But everyone's like, why are you doing it? Because I've got to keep my routine. If you don't keep your routine, you start yeah. waking up at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock becomes 8.30, 9 yeah. o'clock. Then you're hanging out until 2, 2.30. And then you're ruining what you had. And guess what? It's harder to restart yeah. than it is to continue. Absolutely. So. 
That's awesome, man. So, so back to the question. So you, you do go to businesses, you train yeah. businesses, you. Yeah. Do I, so I do sales. So I'll do some sales presentations for like uh, sales companies. Actually one of them, one of the big ones is Adobe. I did Adobe up in Utah, which was really nice. Uh, spoke to the, the director of mobile marketing actually had me talking to some of his leadership guys and talked about, you know, how to, how to build the continue to develop a good chemistry, right? An A team, making sure everybody works together. So yeah, I'll do that. That one there is, um, those are fun, but it's, I guess I have a heart for the younger guys because they don't know what it's like. You know, I was, you know, I went to college, but then I kind of dropped out, if you will, and had to self-make myself, right? And redo everything. Have you gone to high schools? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have. Uh, last one I did was Mojave High School in Arizona, I don't know, right there in Bullhead City. Okay. was the last one I did. But I'll do a lot of uh, teams. Did a lot in Alabama that I okay. did out here. So, so shout out to any, any, any high schools, man. Oh, for sure. I love it. I love I, it. That, See, that's something that we would have never thought that we would need a motivating speaker or that kind of a person in a, in a high school setting. Mm -hmm. But just like what we talked about, our kids are caring 10 times more than what we ever did when we were in high school. This information age is just, I think, weighing down on them. And, right. uh, yeah. Well, and they don't, the, the, the they thing is, is yeah, they need it because they have so many different ways, right? We, we went, like, I had, a, I had a pager and a phone, right? There's no such thing as, and, and, and a cell phone was, I think my, my first cell phone. I had phone, a lot of pager. Those were good. Oh, so oh, uh, yeah, and they gave you the numbers across. And you yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had, I changed the color Hello. with my outfit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Did I you have the chain on it? No, oh, I didn't do the same. I didn't, do the same. I didn't either because I had to run with mine all the time. So <laughs> then I ended up thinking I was cool and I can get a phone, right? So I got a phone. It was like 30, 30 minutes for 30 bucks a month, Dave. Yeah, that was a deal back in the day. But anyway, um, and what, where was I going with this? I don't know. Oh, what, what, oh, yeah, oh what, yeah. So, yeah. This happens a lot. Here, so. here now, though, like, they they need to be able to talk to someone and someone that, uh, talk to someone that understands where they're coming from because like you know when i talk to kids now about bullying i talk about I, I, it's not about just picking on people it wasn't like taking your lunch money anymore that's yeah. what we we thought bullying yeah. was now it's like social media all i gotta do is just put some crazy little meme and say guess who this is and it's considered bullying because mm -hmm. Eric knows where the innuendo is coming from if it's about him, and now he's going to get beat up, you know, get beat, mentally beat up at school. Absolutely. So, so people need to understand that, and I think right now, you know, for them to see people that have those challenges and understand, you know, I talk with a couple other guys that that have dealt with those kind of things, you know, to see that. Let alone, how do you cope with it? Because right now, suicide for kids is like at an all-time high. Yes. And it's scary, and it's because they don't know how to adapt to these things. So when they see, you know, it is a good feeling when they're all coming out and I'm jumping well, out. And, and I think, know. too, like, you talk about adapting to those things, but it's also is, uh, you know, so when we were growing up, like, you know, we talk about how big Adam and I, you were a soccer player, so you were thin, but, you know, Adam and I grew up this big. Maybe I should have played soccer. Yeah, maybe. And all my high school buddies right now are going, you don't even know JB right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, you know, I don't, you know, we weren't known for bullying, but, you know, bullying meant physical intimidation. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and now anybody can be, anyone can wield the sword of intimidation, you know, and, and that's where, you know, I think my wife and I have actually talked about it too. And, you know, when you see the movie Mean Girls, and my wife's like, that's actually how it was. And I'm like, what? Yeah, like, they're not too far from reality in that, you know, they're like, you know, girls are the meanest. Like, especially bullying, actually, and especially social media, too. And, and we try to shield our kids as much as possible, right? Just like any adult. Um, but, you know, that's what the real fear is, is like, that's the problem with putting yourself out there. Man, you can get your knee. You can get chopped down at your knees, and and so I don't know about adapting, but it's about defending, like being right. able to grow your skin as fast as possible. So, and watching what you're doing. That's because yeah. anything can be taken out of context now. It's well, see, that's the difference between a bully then and a bully today. A bull, a bully then had to come with a certain level of confidence because right. you had to do it face to face to the person. Right. Yeah. You had to tell. You had to make fun of that person. Today, you're sitting in your house by yourself. You log on to Facebook. All you have to do is come up with, like you said, a, a Snapchat or whatever, whatever it is. Again. Once you hit post, 
That's all you have to do. These keyboard, yeah. these keyboard tough guys can get on there and say some horrible things on there, but it's more of a coward because he's not facing the person. Right. He's not sitting in front of that person and saying, hey, I don't like the way you look or whatever the case is, you know what I mean? And, but, and lots of they don't know the person, even if it's in high school, they may have seen that person or been in a class with that person, but you know, it's just, and, and that's what's really sad is even on a microcosm, is that kid doesn't know what's going on, doesn't have any idea what's going on with that kid at home. You know, a lot of times even teachers or instructors, administrators struggle with, you know, getting the handle of what's going on in, inside the home. And then to have added pressure from socially because, you know, one, it's not usually just one keyboard warrior. It's, it's you know, multiple that jump on the bandwagon because it's entertaining, right? Yeah. Well, and some of it's even self-administered. I mean, you look at, and I'm not definitely not putting a blast, you know, so my thing is, is you may post something that think it's okay now because it's cool. And then all of a sudden you go to college and all of a sudden someone screenshotted a Twitter post you posted and all of a sudden now you're right. this type of person. Yeah. Right. And now it gets brought up. You see this all the time in the college level to the, to the, to the pros, right? You remember Adam saying this and now you're protecting yourself and it's not, it's, it's a level of bullying, not on purpose, but you're protecting yourself. Yeah. You know, and so you gotta you gotta think twice and understand what you do now. All you gotta do is put it on and say, "Ooh, I better just take that off. That's a bad idea." Ten screenshots right there. So it, it is so true that our kids today are facing a lot more challenges than it is. you know than yeah. we did. They have to think about all this right. stuff because it's an everlasting effect. Something that they do on their stupid can hurt them in a professional career or a job or schooling or anything in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. That's that's fantastic. So, so where do you see this going? Strictly video, or you're still going to do engagement? No, I love talking to a million people, man. I love it. Yes. I, see, no you seem right. kind. Of, you seem kind of like a person I can see on stage, like a who's that? Tony Robbins or whatever. You know, you're up there. <laughs> but you know what? You funny? got the energy going. My biggest fear is motivational speaking. My public speaking is my biggest fear. Really? It is my biggest. Mine fear. too. Mine too. When the spotlights come on, you know me. I go to, yeah, I kind of shade away from it a little bit too. Do you get scared for reals? Or uh, you... I get scared that the jumbo is not going to catch me at the right oh, angle. Geez. And then I remind myself, is there a wrong angle? No. <laughs> no, I do. So yeah, right before I, I end up speaking, I go to the bathroom like 15, 20 times. It's really? totally squeezy. And then when I get up there, I just, you know, I just do it, you know, it just, just starts to flow. Huh? But you know what? I think it's good because like I'll do an outline. I'll understand it. I know a crowd I'm going to be talking to. And at least, you know, when I'm speaking, the mistakes are real and mm -hmm. it's from the heart is what it is. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't try to, I try to stay in my lane, right? If you want me to start speaking about how to motivate six figure earners to become seven figure earners, well, shoot, when I become a seven figure earner, I'll talk to you about that, yeah, right? Right, right? So, you know, and that's where, you know, it's, I like to stick with what it is so that way you know you're getting the real deal. That's awesome. So, yeah. I get nervous every once in a while. I still get nervous of hitting record in here. Do you really? Yeah, every once in a while. You know, but you, you, you got to put yourself out there. You right. got to try it. If you're not going to learn, if you're not going to go through any kind of pain or any kind of suffering or any kind of things like that, then then where's the growth? Yeah, and you're right. You're right. You're right. You're, and you're probably your fear is pressing. Like, what if this is a bad one? What if I mess up? Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's the same thing. I tell I tell everyone. Like my daughter, when she started playing, when she started playing soccer, you know, and she was like, "Well, I don't know anyone. I don't want to go to a pickup game." Well, what if you end up being good? Yeah. What if you don't? Yeah. You know. Or so, what if you end up helping others? And what if What if you're you're the leader and assist? Yeah. Like Scotty Pippen. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I, I do. I so see. who's Pippen or Jordan between these two? I just want to know. No, no. I do. I got to tell the story. I saw Scottie Pippen in McCarran Airport. Like it, it was before the quarantine. My oh, okay. Friend. And I'm picking up my brother from the airport, and he's coming through the baggage claim, and I see him. I, dude, you could you spot him like yeah, a right, mile right, away, right. right? I said, Scotty, and I went like this, <laughs> and he turned to me. He goes, he goes, what's up? He goes, the greatest bull that ever lived, and he just started laughing. I thought it was great. <laughs> My wife has the biggest crush on him, by the way. It's oh, yeah? Yeah, Scotty, she needs to love Scotty. But anyway, so he came into my store one time when I worked at Foot Locker, which was, but he played for Portland at the time. Is he a cool dude? 
that very short interaction that was just a smile, a wave, and a laugh because, you know. I had a different one. I'm not going to say it was good or bad, but I will say I think he was still trying to prove himself because it was his first year with Portland away from Oh, he was still playing. Yeah, he was playing. He was playing for Portland at the time, right after he left Chicago. So he was still trying to, you know, not prove himself, but... I don't need anyone else. I can I can bring this together. Yeah, so, yeah. He was that was his that was his theme that year. Yeah. So, so. well, I got Grandpa Pippen. That's yeah. what I got. <laughs> He's a likable guy now, probably. Oh, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It was fun in the airport. Thanks. Yeah, you never know who you're going to see, especially in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You never know. So, well, right on, man. So, with the webinars. Uh, how does the energy change a lot? I mean, how do you keep the same energy like you would have on stage, but still do it on a webinar? Man, I'm still trying to do the webinar thing. Okay, so like, and I'm so like, you haven't put any out yet. I haven't put anything. And what I mean by that is, I'm doing all my financial stuff online. That's my okay. practice, right? So I'll do that, and it's like I don't know, like if you've really like tried to adapt and watch yourself on a webinar it's tough there's things where i now i, I got a stand-up desk now because i figured i can't do it sitting down anymore because yeah, yeah. i'm used to talking right. and moving and uh second of all making eye contact that's one of the biggest things is right you can't make eye contact with your crowd and i gotta learn i gotta look straight at the camera i can't look at everybody down here and you're looking at yourself because, yeah you're looking at them or you're looking at yourself so you're no longer making that eye contact you have to look here to make sure you're here. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. and then you've got to understand too, like when, when I'm talking and then someone else ends up speaking, okay, now I can't be staring at the person while this person's talking because now this guy's a creeper, right? right I got to right. look down and look at Eric because Eric's now talking to you. That's so it's, challenge. it's weird. So, so those are the things, but, um, you know, so it's, it's, I think it's about, I just don't know here is I have a presentation. We got, we, I got a slide deck I want to play with, but, you know, how do I get it out there to everyone is the question. And who do I who do I market it to? So it's still a, still a little bit of a play. So I'm, I'm masterminding that, if you will, and trying to figure out how to get that out. Because there's no one out there right, right. now really doing a, that. I know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, to, mas- to answer your question, you asked who's, who's, who's Jordan, who's Pippen. It's more like NASCAR around here. Or yeah. We're more like shake and bake. Right. Yeah. Okay. So on, on any given turn, so someone will slingshot the other. So who's Ricky and Bobby? <laughs> we have a shaky bag. <laughs> I guess we got breading on the chicken. I was thinking more of the night of the Roxbury type, <laughs> yeah. type, type two brothers, man. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I wish we could be so well dressed. So, dude, it's it's been a lot of fun, man. It's been a lot of fun doing this. Yeah. I can tell. I mean, it's, it's like, well, E, you've been you've been talking about this forever, and then you know, I, I remember you were doing it with another guy, and you kind of kicked him to the curb, and then you ended up just kind of finding someone, which I'm happy you did, man. That's that's awesome, you know. But so I, yeah, but, you know, going back to and what Adam's question was is is finding the right energy, and and I think in life we're always trying to find. You, know, you talk about counseling for the kids, is you got to find what works for everyone, right? Right. And so for me, you know, we, everyone, one of the first questions we, we come in and when a guest comes in, they're like, how this podcast and they come and they see the setup and they go, well, these guys are not just recording from a laptop. Like we've got some microphones, we're developing a great studio. And so I do give credit to Adam, right? Like, you know, that I've been touch, you know, touching that podcast button a little bit, but I couldn't really move it forward. And, and so Adam really does create. Like the, he does the things that I don't have time for or that I, you know, I'm like, I'm just not going to do. Right. And so that that's where it is, or a little shake and bake where, you know, there's things that I bring to the table that Adam doesn't bring to the table, even though we're very similar in a lot of ways is we've got this whole like cornucopia of opportunities and tools. And, and, and I think something else that you talk about too, like when you talked about, you know, keep swinging or keep moving. You know, there's a reason why when you're running horses that they put blinders on those horses because those horses are stallions. Right. Whether they know it that day or not, they all have a chance to win. And, and that's, you know, and I know that's a horrible metaphor because everyone's like, oh, those horses, da, 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 da. But for that given day, at that given moment, that's all those horses want to do is run. And that's all the jockeys want to do. The jockeys just want to get as much 
running out of those horses at that right moment as possible. And, and the only way to do that is to put the blinders on those horses to get them to go forward. And, and so, and, and that's where we get, we always talk about distractions, right? You know, in the, even in the driving manuals, do you know that even listening to radio is actually a, a distraction, right? Oh, I'm on the radio. I'm listening to Chet Buchanan. Chet comes on, and says, says something crazy, and then you hear, oh, I was in an accident. I was listening to 98.5. Just it blew my mind. Right? I got, they got distracted, and so, and when we talk about texting, all oh, that that crazy text came across. Did you have to answer it? No. Did you have to read it? No. But it came, and it was a distraction at that moment. So you took the blinders off, right? Whether it's driving, whether it's you know, getting your studies, you know, it, it, whatever it is, like even you talk about financial goals, right? And you talk about 1% and you're like, well, I can make 1% change today, right? And then it, people take the blinders off and they're like, well, how about 0 0.01 today, right? Yeah. Right? Sometimes I'll take that from some folk, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they're like, we got a coupon in the mail from Sonic. Sonic's been open the whole time. You know what? There's no reason why we don't stop and get a, you know, Coke Zero with cherry, not the diet. And maybe, you know, why we're here? Dollar forty nine. Soft serve cone. I'll work it off tomorrow. Working a soft serve cone. He's on the ice cream. Kit. Dude, he, he is, is on the ice cream. Kit. It's hot outside. I'm ready for a little refreshment. <laughs> Some ice cream. Huh? Yeah. Well, we better go get you a cone then. Uh, amen, brother. <laughs> well, right on, man. We appreciate you coming on the show, talking about us. Or talking to us. Well, I'd like to get a follow-up from him, too. Yeah. You know, and, and see if see he was able to keep go. the blinders on or if he, you know, if he took a blinder off and, you know, did strike, <sighs> crash in the fence. So oh, I'm excited thanks, to hear. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But I, I do know he has some really cool videos, especially with some, you know, it was soccer metaphors. And uh, I know there was a skinny guy on there and he's looking real good so in the park right yeah i got it got it <laughs> so uh we'll, we're gonna go ahead and put all your links in the bio okay cool so Thank you. so appreciate it uh we'll, uh if you guys are interested in contacting james go down to the bio all the links are there his email uh website do you have any videos there. that they can see like maybe some post schools because i think we're looking at possibly distance learning and maybe some administrators might want to get you in I'm thinking at the beginning of the school year to get, hey, I know this is going to be a crazy year again. Right. Maybe this is how you get the blinders on. Yeah, no, I'll I'll look into that. I'll see I'll see what I can get from previous. Obviously, it's going to be a presentation inside right. of the gym, right? That'll be the big issue. But I'm definitely, you know, if it has to do with any kind of school or public service, military, anything, I don't charge for those. So, you know, that, that is a key thing because that's, I wish someone would have taken me. If it wouldn't have been for my coach, I probably don't know where I'd be in mm -hmm. my years of life. So that was my mentor. So I have no problem, you know, kind of doing that. And obviously that's, that'd be great to be able to get on a Google classroom, if you will. Yeah. And yeah, get on some, awesome. yeah I'll, I'll send you some stuff and. Yeah, we yeah. can't wait to pass you around. So, <laughs> and you can't wait to get in my closet. God, yeah, I'm, you know I'm this. loving this. I'm I loving got, this. That's a lot of love. I <laughs> gotta check out the sneakers, man. I love that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's a plethora. It's, it's a love and hate relationship because when you start seeing them, it's like envy starts growing when you step in the door. <laughs> it's like going to a car show and you see everything you can't afford. Yeah, and I downloaded this app called Sneaker Steal. I don't know if I should be telling you that, but no. sneaker steal, like I'll go on and they'll tell me when there's a discount on anything. Like I bought a pair of New Balances for like 39 bucks. Love New Balance, by the way. Yeah. Great size so, yeah, for, the, for the bigger in size. Yeah, so, you you and Steve Jobs. Yeah. So. I can see the resemblance. <laughs> You're feeding it, man. You're feeding it. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm, dude, this whole week I've been in a weird mood. You got to ask my wife. I've been doing some stupid stuff at home. I'm not going to talk about it. Oh, I thought you were going back to <laughs> I'm, I'm not child number eight. And I was like, oh, you get loaded up no, again. No, no, no. You got to do what you got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> well, right on, man. All right. Cool. James, we, we, Thank we, you. we really appreciate it. And we want to say we really appreciate everyone downloading the show, listening, telling your friends about it. And please continue to do that. If you hit that subscribe button on iTunes, 
shoot a text to a friend. Let them know about the show. If they can get something from it, if you got something from it, tell someone else. Word of mouth is always huge. I'm doing it for the video. You are. <laughs> but my mean it. But we want to just shoot uh, to shoot out a huge thank you. We had over 700 downloads in the month of May. That was a big month for us, uh, and it's all it, it's all because of you guys. So continue to uh, check out the show and tell your friends about it, and let's you know let's grow this thing. Let's keep the ball rolling. Yeah, let's keep Stay it rolling. Stay focused and be safe out there. Show some love to someone. All right, all right. We'll see you.